In this video, we're going to take a look at complex numbers and loci. So at this point, we should already know that we can represent complex numbers on an Argand diagram, which is the axis that looks like this. But this part represents the real axis. This part represents the imaginary axis. And we should also know about the modulus of a complex number, which is the magnitude or the, the distance from the origin and the argument of a complex number. And the argument of a complex number has got to be measured from the real axis, from the positive real axis, anti-clockwise. Okay. So there's a couple of types of loci questions we can get. Um, the first one would be, say, for example, the modulus of z is equal to 4. So what this is telling us is z is a complex number. Now, there isn't just one complex number that satisfies this. There's, a, there's actually like an infinite amount, but there's a complex number that the distance is 4 away. So what would that look like on the Argand diagram? Hopefully we would agree that we can see that this is going to be a circle. If you think about it, if I take the modulus of 4, clearly that's 4. If I take the modulus of minus 4, that's also 4. And remember, we're just thinking about modulus in this instance as representing a distance. So if it's the modulus of z equal to a number, we just get a circle with radius 4. So even that point there, or this point here, would all have a distance of 4 away. Okay. If we've got the argument of z equal to something, say for example if I said the argument of z was equal to pi over 4, maybe pause and think about what this is going to look like. So we, we know that the argument is the angle, and if you think about it, if you measure the argument from the positive real axis, Pi over 4 is like 45 degrees. So if you visualize this, the, that complex number there would have an argument of pi over 4. This complex number there would also have an argument of pi over 4. This complex number here would also have an argument of pi over 4. Like anywhere along this line, the arguments would be pi over 4. And we actually end up with something which is called a half line. Bit of a weird one, because although the line is infinitely long, we say it's half a line. And the reason why we say it's half a line is because a common mistake that people might make is you might think that you could have a complex number down here as well. But the argument for a point down there would not be pi over 4. So we cannot include these points. The argument for that would be, if we measure it this way, it'd be minus 3 pi over 4, wouldn't it? But you could also measure it that way. And it'd be pi over 4 plus pi, if we go this way, which is anti-clockwise, the argument would be 5 pi over 4. So there's two ways of representing arguments. If you go this way, it's positive. If you go this way, it's negative. So basically, we'd, we should realize that the theta is 5 pi over 4, which is also the same as minus 3 pi over 4 within this context. Obviously, clearly, those two things are not equal. Maybe I shouldn't write that, but the argument of 5 pi over 4 is the same as the argument of minus 3 pi over 4. Basically, we don't want to be using points on that path. So we just get this half line. OK, so first example says, sketch the locus of points that satisfy the modulus of z minus 2 plus 3i is equal to 2. Now clearly when we get a modulus equal to 2, it's telling me that the distance is 2. So we're going to be drawing a circle with a radius of 2. But we have to think about very carefully when it's being subtracted and it has to be written in this form, this is going to be the centre.
Now, I actually write it as a coordinate, although we shouldn't really write it like this. If you think about it, it's 2 plus 3i. Just while you're getting used to this topic, you can think about it as... If it was an, if it was an x and a y coordinate, the centre would be 2, 3. So we'd move 2 across on the real, 3 up on the imaginary. And the radius is equal to 2. Don't do the square roots, because I know sometimes when you're working with circles, it's like that number represents the um, r squared, but for this topic it doesn't. Like this is just telling me that distance is equal to 2. So modulus represents distance, distance is 2, that means the radius is 2. So as we draw this, we have to be a little bit careful and think about whereabouts it's going to lie. Uh, 2, 3, so most of the interesting stuff is going to be going on over this side, isn't it? So if I move two across, and three up, that's going to be the centre of my circle. Now because the radius is equal to two, just think carefully about whereabouts this circle is going to lie. If the radius is two, that distance there is two, isn't it? So it's actually going to just switch the imaginary axis. So the imaginary axis is going to be a tangent to our circle. Also think about where about it would lie. That distance there, we know is the same as this distance. So if that distance is 3, that distance is 3, which means the circle clearly won't touch the real axis. I'm not drawing that very well, but that distance there should be 1, shouldn't it? Okay. So obviously you guys should use a compass and a protractor. I'm just attempting to draw it on this whiteboard, which is not easy. But you end up with <laughs> a potato or a circle. It's not too bad. I've drawn worse. So that's what that one would look like. Um, if you want to label the centre, you could clearly say that it was two across and three up. Or you could, you could label that point centre. Two plus three I. Okay. Okay, so next two, modulus of z plus 3 is equal to 2, and modulus of z minus 2 plus 2i is equal to 2 to 2. Pause just for a minute and see if you can figure these out. So for this one, a little bit of a sneaky one, this. You have to write it as z minus, because we're thinking about it as a translation to figure out where the centre of the circle is or, or where we're measuring the distance from. Like when it's written in this form, this means that the distance from this point is equal to 2. So if it was plus 3, it would be z minus minus 3 plus 0i. I think it's useful to write it, even though it's clearly a real number, if you write it as, as a complex number, you can, it helps you to think about where about we go. Okay, so if plus 3 means it's minus, so we're moving th negative 3 in the real direction and we're not moving anything in the imaginary direction. So when we draw this, again we shouldn't really write this because we're mixing coordinates, but if you're thinking about it as an x and a y coordinate, the coordinate would be minus 3, 0. I know you're more familiar with x and y coordinates for now. But you will get used to these after a while, it doesn't take too long. So the sensor would be minus 3, 0, which means we go 3 this way. The radius is 2, so again, if that distance is 3, it's going to look something like this, isn't it? So the radius is 2. Oops. Just use a protractor. It's easier. So that distance there would be 1. If you were thinking about it as a, as a coordinate, it'd be minus 1, wouldn't it? Um, and that distance there would be 5. Okay. So you, it's not clear how to actually represent this. Like you can, if you think about it as a coordinate, clearly it's minus 1 uh, as a complex number. But if you think about it as a distance, because sometimes when you see these questions on Argon diagrams, they don't use negatives because they're, they're representing this as a distance. The distance is 1 away, the distance there is 5 away. But if you think about it as a complex number, it would be minus 5 and minus 1. Okay. For the next one, 
we've got z minus 2 plus 2i equals 2 root 2. So the radius is going to be 2 root 2. And we have to just very carefully think about it as z minus. Always write it like this before, because this is normally the first part of the question. And if you get your sketch wrong, it's going to impact what comes next. So just be careful. Use this bracket. What would go inside? Okay, so it would be 2 minus 2i, wouldn't it? That would be equivalent to this, wouldn't it? So we can see our centre. Would be 2 minus 2. If we were thinking about it as a coordinate. So 2 across and 2 down. Think about how you draw your axis if it's not given to you. So if we go 2 across, our distance there would be 2. If we go 2 down, our distance there would be 2. Now we get a bit of symmetry again for where the circle is. Um, what would the radius equal? So 2 root 2. Well, you have to be a little bit careful because when I'm drawing this circle, like if the radius was small, obviously the circle would be there. If the radius was large, the circle would be, would be up there. But what might be worth working on quickly is, what's this distance here? Because if I could work out that distance from the origin, I could figure out where the bottom of the circle is. Like, is it, does it go through the origin? Is it, is it further? So if you just look at this triangle, if that's 2 and that's 2, we could, we could just think about that as a little right angle triangle, wouldn't we? 2, 2, right angle. That distance there would be, if we use Pythagoras, would be 2 root 2. So this number is, is, it's not like randomly chosen, it's actually quite significant. If that distance there is 2 root 2, what that's telling us is when we draw this circle, if we were going to get full marks for this question, it would actually have to pass through the origin. So we would get... A lot of symmetry, which would be much better if I'd drawn this on paper. <laughs> okay, that is definitely the worst circle I've drawn on the video, but there you go, that's supposed to be a circle. So the centre there, um, let's, let's call it C for centre, would be 2 minus 2i. And it should go through the origin, because the radius is, is 2 root 2. Okay, in the final part of the video, we're going to look at um, the arguments. So if the argument is z is equal to 3 pi over 4, this is going to be a half line. And because it's just the argument is z, we actually measure it from the origin. You can think about it as the argument of z minus... 0 plus 0i. Zero For now it's not that important, but it will be useful when we see the next one. Because just like with the um, the circles, we should think about it as a translation. So if it's just the argument of z, or the modulus of z, we start at the origin, or the sense at the origin. But when all the stuff's going on, it's useful to think about it like this. Now an argument of 3, 5, over 4 has got to be measured from the real axis. It's a positive argument. So we'll measure it this way, and 3 pi over 4 would give us a line that points in this direction. Significantly, the grid, because sometimes we can think about the, the geometry of these questions, which will come later in, in, in the next part of the booklet or the videos, that line would have a gradient of minus 1. Because if you think about it, 3 pi over 4, that's like pi over 4 there, so that's like 45 degrees, that's 135 degrees, so this half line would have a gradient of minus 1. Could be important for something that comes next in the question. Okay, Okay, so two more. Uh, the argument of z minus 1 is equal to pi over 2. So think about it as z minus. Now if it's minus 1, it's going to be 1 plus 0 i. So this means that we're measuring the argument from 
from one. So we're moving a distance of one away, so it's one on the real axis. So the half line starts at that point, which is one. Now an argument to pi over two, again, we have to measure it from the real axis. An argument to pi over two is 90 degrees. So the actual half line that we get goes straight up. So it's a vertical line. And then the last one, argument of z plus two i. So it'd be z minus nothing real, so zero, and then minus two i. We've also got a negative argument, which means we're going to measure anti-clockwise. Uh, sorry, clockwise. We'll see that in a second. So first of all, think about where the argument's measured from. So negative two on the imaginary axis. So if we go down to the start and the argument from that point there. Now this is the first time we've seen this, so just be careful. When you're measuring an argument and it's not from the origin or the real axis already, what you've got to do is you've got to visualise, or you could even draw it on like a dotted line. Just make sure if you do a dotted line on, that it's clearly not the half line. You don't want that to be marked, like that's not the half line. But if we measure it from there, Okay, so minus minus 2i, so the 2 down. The argument has to be measured from this like positive real axis if it was there. So an argument of minus pi over 3 means we're going this way. Now minus pi over 3 is the same as... Th pi over 3 is the same as 30 de uh, sorry, 60 degrees. So if you're thinking about what this would look like, use your compass and your protractor. Pi over 3... Well, pi is, is, is 180, so we're splitting this up into thirds. So it should roughly be, well, it should be, well if you use a protractor, it should be exactly be 60 degrees. So we're going 60 degrees this way. Which means the half line would go down in this direction. Okay. And it, again, in terms of what you would label, if you've shown that it's negative and that distance is 2, it's the same as, as, as thinking about it's minus 2i as a coordinate. But the heart of the actual angle itself, minus pi over 3, has to go down this way. So it's like 60 degrees below, and that's your half line there. Okay, thanks guys.